Good morning, everyone. Thank you for attending this session to listen to my talk. I also would like to thank the organizing committee for didn't I turn it on? Sorry, for uh, giving me the opportunity to present my research on the effects of halofusion on, on uterine lyomyoma cells. Uterine lyomyomas, which are also known as fibroids, are uh, myomas are known as the most common uh, gynecologic tumors in women during their reproductive years. Uh, the overall incidence of these tumors in Caucasian women is as high as 60% and 80% in African American women. Although these tumors are benign in nature, they can cause severe symptoms in women such as abnormal uterine bleeding, leading to anemia, uh, reproductive dysfunction such as infertility, uh, recurrent abortion, and also preterm labor. They also are associated with high pelvic pain and pressure. Uh, these symptoms have been uh, the lead cause of um, hysterectomies in the United States, and it's been uh, mentioned that about 600 hysterectomies are performed annually in the U.S. for the management of these uh, tumors. And the overall cost of these uh, tumors with regard to indirect and direct costs uh, is estimated to be between three to six billion dollars annually in the United States. These tumors which arise from the uterine smooth muscle cells of the uterus can form in different locations within the uterine cavities, so hence uh, we have subserosal, intramural, pedunculated, or the submucosal uh, formation of these tumors. A uh, patient can have uh, as low as one tumor in the uterine cavity to as high as four or five, and they can vary in size from a few millimeters to a few centimeters. At the cellular level, these tumors are characterized by two main features. The first one is an increased rate of proliferation compared to the normal myometrial tissue, as you can see here in this PCN and standing between the two. Uh, disease and normal tissue. The second feature of these tumors, which is actually the hallmark of them, are an increased synthesis and deposition of extracellular matrix, mainly collagens one and three. Here in this Mason's trichrome staining, which stains collagens in blue, you can appreciate the abundance presence of collagens in the lyomyoma tissue as compared to the adjacent myometrium tissue. In addition to that, electron microscopic analysis have uh, shown that uh, the ultra structure of these collagens in lyomyoma tissue is completely distorted in that they have lost the completely packed organized uh, formation here to these uh, random formations which are not uh, indicative of a healthy extracellular matrix. Unfortunately, despite the prevalence of these tumors, their etiology is not fully known. There are, however, several suggested theories based on the research that has been done so far. One of those suggests uh, on genetic, epigenetic, and also changes in the uh, RNAi machinery as being the uh, underlying cause of these tumors. The other one is based on uh, clinical and also in vitro studies uh, showing that there are changes in the expression uh, of uh, sex steroid hormones, uh, such in estrogen and progesterone specifically, and their associated receptors. There are also reports on an increase uh, in specific growth factors like PGF-beta and PDGF receptor, which is not known whether these are the primary or the secondary uh, effectors of these tumors. In addition to that, epidemiological studies have indicated environmental and predisposing risk factors such as smoking, uh, use of birth controls, uh, high BMI, low vitamin deficiency as having a role in the pathogenesis of these tumors. Based on the knowledge that we have so far, uh, there has been a few uh, uh, treatments available for women, which we, I can categorize them into three major ones. One is surgical, the other one is therapeutic, and lastly, the non-invasive uh, treatments that are available. Uh, starting with surgical ones, which is the main uh, form of intervention for these treatments, uh, we have two forms of surgeries. One is myomectomy and the other one is hysterectomy. Hysterectomy is the gold standard uh, treatment for these tumors, which of course takes care of the problem totally by removing the uterus. Uh, myomectomy is, uh, leads that by uh, just removing the uh, tumor from the um, uterus. 
although they provide a complete relief of the symptom for the patient, they are associated with high costs and complications after the surgery. After surgical interventions, most patients uh, are placed on uh, therapeutic treatments, mainly hormone uh, treatments such as GnRH and um, agonists and uh, anti-estrogen and progesterone treatments. There are also some cases where uh, inhibitors for enzymes involved in the hormone production is also uh, prescribed to these patients. These, again, would only take care of the symptoms on a temporary basis because once the patient stops taking these, the tumor growth comes back and so forth, uh, the symptoms. In recent years, the non-invasive approaches have gained momentum. The, some of these include high-frequency ultrasonography and arterial embolization, although they uh, seem to be less invasive and so far have shown some uh, less, I should say, lesser side effects. They are not uh, complete studies showing their efficacy, and they may not be suitable for all women. So uh, overall, I should say that although there are so many options available for these women, uh, <coughs> They do not address the underlying cause of these disease. They only relieve the symptoms. And secondly, they uh, have side effects. And finally, they are not suitable for women who would like to maintain their fertility. So there is therefore the need for development of alternative therapeutic treatments for these uh, patients. And uh, in order to address this need, we uh, decided to look at basic features of these tumors, which was, as I mentioned, increased rate of proliferation and uh, collagen expression. We thought whether we should uh, try um, targeting the increased expression of collagens as a form of therapeutic treatment. In doing that, we looked at similar fibrotic diseases and found that, that there are four major drugs that are currently being studied uh, to control fibrosis. These are interferons, perfenidone, trichostatin A, and halofugenone. Out of these four major drugs, halofugenol seems to be the one that's specifically targeting collagen expression. This uh, drug uh, is, derived, uh, is a plant alkaloid derived from the uh, plant uh, Dicora febrifugia. It's been used for thousands of years in Chinese medicine uh, to control fever and malaria. In Western countries, it's been used as a coccidious stat in poultry industry, and it was uh, just a serendipity overdose of this drug in a poultry industry in Israel in early 90s, uh, which revealed that this drug specifically targets expression of collagens. Uh, currently, there are cl clinical studies uh, using this drug for fibrotic diseases such as scleroderma and restenosis, also muscular dystrophy, and again, more recently, uh, for controlling uh, cancer metastasis um, as well. So based on these data, we thought, why don't we try uh, testing the inhibitory effects of halofeogenol in uterine leiomyomas. In doing that, we uh, decided to look both at in vitro and in vivo models using primary cells obtained from women who were going through an uh, surgical intervention. After doing those response studies and finding the right concentration of halofeogenol to be used for our in vitro studies, we first looked at the effect of halofeogenol on proliferation of leiomyomas smooth muscle cells. Here you see results using thymidine incorporation assay where we had cells uh, cultured in vitro uh, in the absence or presence of PDGF, which is one of the major growth factors involved in the pathogenesis of this disease. Uh, cells were either treated with just halofusion for, for, uh, for 24 hours or treatment uh, treated with both halofusion and PDGF for 24 hours. And as you can see, this treatment was very effective in reducing the proliferation of leiomyoma cells. We next wanted to see whether uh, halofugenone had any carryover effects once it was removed from the media, and the results show that yes, it does, although it, the proliferation goes back higher than what we saw before, but it's still significantly less, that, less than what we see without uh, halofugenone treatment. Our next question was whether halofugenone could target the expression of collagens, as has been seen in similar fibrotic diseases. Uh, so we did a time course study with 15 nanomolar halofugenone and found that that halofugenone could uh, very efficiently uh, downregulate the expression of both collagens 1 and 3 in leiomyoma smooth muscle cells. In order to see how these inhibitory effects are occurring, we looked at the, uh, any alterations uh, done by halofugenone on major signaling pathways involved in proliferation and collagen synthesis. These were MAP kinase, SARC, and AKT pathways. 
uh, treatment with uh, 15 nanomolar halofusion oil showed that there was no change at the activation of AKT pathway. However, both ERK and SAR kinase were uh, activated by halofusion in as early as 15 minutes. We next pre-treated these cells with halofusion for six hours and then stimulated them with PDGF to see whether halofusion could alter the activation of SARC and MAP kinase signaling pathways that has been known to be done by uh, PDGF treatment. The results show that yes, it does. It decreases the activation of ERK and SARC downstream of PDGF receptor because we didn't see any change at the level of the uh, receptor. To see whether we could replicate these in vitro uh, results in an in vivo setting, we developed an in vivo uh, mouse model uh, in collaboration with doctors Kurita and Kyung at Northwestern University. Here we have used adult female over electromized immunodeficient mice placed on hormone uh, regimen. And then we transplanted uh, primary cells from patients under the kidney capsule of these mice. After the establishment of tumor for four weeks, uh, animals were placed, in, were grouped in two, and one received vehicle and the other one halofusion on two different doses. Here you can see the presence of tumor under the kidney capsule of vehicle treated animals and also halofusion treated ones. And here is an HNE staining of uh, primary cells xenografted next to the kidney uh, of mouse. We started with 500 micrograms per kilogram body weight treatment of these mice for five days a week for the duration of four weeks. Here you see that the tumor volume was significantly reduced by about 35% uh, in halofusion treated animals. These are data from six uh, vehicle animals and uh, eight halofusion treatments. Although the results looked very promising, uh, these treatments seem to be uh, not safe for mice host. We ended up losing a lot of mice during the course of the treatment, and this was quite obvious by the, looking at their body weight. So we changed the treatment to every other day here. It looked like uh, the treatment was better tolerated by mice, uh, as we did not end up, we didn't have as many <laughs> dead mice on our hands, and there was not much of, uh, there was a still differences between the body weight, but not as much as the previous treatment. And interestingly, there was not much of a significant difference between the reduction of tumor volume that was seen with the daily treatment. Based on these data, we decided to cut back on the dose of the halofusion to see whether we would uh, take care of the health of the animals while uh, shrinking the size of these tumor. So we went with 250 micrograms per kilogram halofusion, again, given to animals uh, intraperitoneally uh, for uh, five days a week for four weeks. Here, mice tolerated these dose very well. We didn't see any effect on, uh, on the body weight of these animals. We further analyzed major organs of these mice, these in both vehicle and halofusion treatments. These body organs were heart, lung, liver, kidney, bladder, vagina, and finally, uterus. Again, we didn't see any side effect on any of these major organs, so indicating that this dose and this treatment regimen seem to be safe for our mice host. And of course, our question was, does it does this dose affect the size of these tumors? Yes, it did. It decreased that significantly in halofusion treated animals, looking at uh, six uh, mice for which had received uh, tumors from uh, four patients. In order to see how this inhibitory effect um, is happening, uh, we looked at proliferation of xenografted tumors. Using KI67 staining, we noticed that the rate of proliferation was significantly reduced in halofusion treated versus vehicle treated animals. This seemed to be occurring at the same time with an induction of apoptosis in halofusion treated animals as observed here by uh, tunnel staining. So, so far, our in vitro studies have shown that halofusion is very efficient in uh, inhibiting the proliferation of lyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomyomy
As for our future plans, we are going to look at the expression of collagens in our in vivo model to see whether similar results would be observed in the in vivo system. We are now in the process of uh, looking at the mRNA expression of major fibrotic factors like <coughs> EJ-beta-1 and 3 collagens, also the cross-linking enzyme for collagens lysol oxidase in both in vivo and in vitro. We are planning to treat these animals for a longer period of time, which will be eight weeks, to see whether we will see less reduction of tumor volume upon halofusion on treatment. And finally, we would like to have the treatment scheme where we would remove halofusion to and see how long the carryover effects of these halofusion and inhibitory effects would last. With that, I would like to thank my advisor, Dr. Romana Novak, for her ongoing support. Also, our collaborators, uh, Drs. Kurita, Kiang, and McNeil. I would like to specifically thank patients and Barbara Hall, the research coordinator at Carl Hospital, who has done a great job in collecting samples for us. We have also received some samples from Northwestern Feinberg School of Medicine. I would like uh, to thank uh, members of my committee, doctors Barb, Unique, Floss, Kim, and Miller for their ongoing uh, suggestions and advice, and also wonderful, wonderful people at Novak Lab, and of course, funding by NIH. And with that, I would be glad to take any questions you may have. for future. We have that in mind, but we would like to further investigate this as it, this molecule as is, but in future we would definitely would like to fine tune depending on the results we see specifically with uh, potential side effects on. Uh, and you do see side effects of so far, we have only had treatments for four weeks. That's why we are going to for eight weeks to see whether there's a time-dependent factor going on. Right. If there's no further questions, please join me in thanking you. Thank you.